Hi everyone, uh, I'm Carolina. You may know me from uh, some Fedora uh, contributions. I've been a package maintainer of Python packages for over a year now. I'm also a, a member of Python SIG and collectively we take care of uh, over 700 packages in Fedora. I was checking it and I was really surprised by the number. Um, in my daily job, I work as a uh, team member of Python maintenance team at Red Hat. And most of my time, I uh, make sure that the uh, new versions of Python packages are uh, updated and nicely integrated into Fedora ecosystem. Okay, uh, today's agenda uh, is quite short. The presentation will not contain any uh, funny images, so you don't have to look at it. <laughs> it's mostly for me to uh, know what I'm talking about. So uh, I'll talk briefly about the issues a new package maintainer in Fedora deals with. Then I'd like to elaborate a bit why we consider pull request workflow more beneficial rather than pushing directly to the origin branches. Uh, and how the reviews are the crucial parts of crucial part of the workflow. Finally, I want to share our consensus, uh, our team's consensus about how we'd like to do it and how you can do it too, if you'd like. So let's rewind back to the time when we all wanted to become a package maintainer in Fedora. Uh, the typical uh, path is that you create a new package and you submit a new package re review request uh, in Bugzilla. Um, those of you who remember, uh, remember also that the learning curve is quite steep. We've got excellent packaging guidelines, but they are impossible to read and comprehend just like that. Uh, we also, uh, during the package review, we can uh, have some nitpicks pointed out by the reviewers, but once the package gets approved to Fedora, you're pretty much on your own. Uh, if you don't have any co-maintainers or if your package doesn't belong to some very important package uh, stack, like, like all the Python packages, uh, you can do really weird stuff with your package and no one really cares, especially if you push directly to the Rawhide or Fedora uh, branches. Uh, and in reality, it takes weeks and maybe months uh, to actually grasp what the packaging is about. Uh, it was mentioned yesterday at Nest that you know, packaging is not about creating an RPM, it's about integrating. Um, if you uh, do really weird stuff with your package and your package becomes a part of uh, bigger stuff like the Python stack, it can happen that someone from uh, uh, someone doing, for example, master build will take a look at it and help you with it furthermore later on. But that otherwise, Mm, not really. Uh, the other thing that's uh, very typical uh, to federal land, but not only, is the amount of tribal knowledge. And uh, there is a lot of it, a lot of undocumented stuff that just goes without saying, which is harmful towards new contributors. They will always fall into uh, each trap that's there waiting for them. And by falling into the traps, they create their understanding of the domain. So in the end, it's not that bad. Um, so my point of view in this talk is a person who's created their first package around a year and a half ago. And uh, I'm, I started reviewing uh, other people's uh, pull requests around a half a year later. Uh, I want to share my view on pull request reviews as a mean to create, uh, to use those two sources that we have, the packaging guidelines and the tribal knowledge, and create a unified stream of knowledge which you can use to help your understanding. Sorry, yes. Okay, uh, pull request workflow. So first, why do as a Python main actually use it in Fedora? Uh, we take care of plenty of packages, so we want to keep track of what's going on in them. That's for one. Uh, another thing is that uh, you get the benefit of CI. This is really good thing. Uh, basically, instantly when you open a CI, the Koji Scratch build is run, and it will give you the green stamp that your packages uh, can build. That's really helpful because uh, as you know, we have uh, uh, two commands for pushing 
one command for pushing the uh, for committing the changes and the another one to, act to update the sources. And it's very typical that you forget to uh, run a third package G new sources. Mm. Another CI that we have available in Fedora Disk Kit is Zool. And it does a lot of checks for you. It can check that your package installs fine, it runs the tests, it runs RPM diffs, inspects, and, and much more. So uh, if you don't use Zool on your uh, CI, start using it. The opt-in is very easy, it's trivial. You have to add two lines of uh, uh, code to a YAML config file. It's, it's really nothing. Um, we as a team have an idea how we want to integrate our packages uh, into Fedora. It is uh, uh, an ecosystem. So a new update can break other packages, which leads to long devil discussions, uh, untagging the builds, broken raw hide, broken stable Fedoras in the worst case, apologies uh, and stuff. So from this point of view, it makes sense to be reasonably sure that your changes don't bring this kind of impact. Also, uh, back to my point of view, uh, I do believe that pull request workflow is beneficial to newbies, to the newcomers. Uh, for one, when I, as a newcomer, uh, unexperienced packager, submit a pull request uh, to a package, anyone from the Fedora land can come see, comment on my changes and propose better, and they will propose better. You know, it's, uh, no, no question uh, was left unanswered for, from those I had in our disk git. Uh, on the other hand, as a pull request reviewer, if you're a new member, you can learn ways and quirks the experienced packagers uh, have. You can basically mimic what they do and then use it for your own contributions. Uh, I believe that uh, reviews can help creating a mental model of the packaging uh, for the new members. You, can, uh, you have an open channel with the experienced packagers uh, just right there where your knowledge gap is. Mm, so basically you can ask for special, specific lines even and get some explanation. Also, your question may actually help identify the gaps in the process and documentation. As I said, plenty of things come without saying. Uh, and maybe some of those things are really worth documenting. So you can establish that maybe the commit message is not so clear or maybe uh, you, sh you should update the documentation, the packaging guidelines uh, in some other. So uh, the newcomer's perspective is really valuable. Uh, so basically what you get from lur lurking at other people's contributions is to get better ideas how to perform particular actions in your own contributions. Uh, so let's rewind again. Uh, let, let's, let's come back to this uh, newcomer stuff. Uh, so your knowledge is somewhere here. You just managed to uh, get your first package to Fedora. And then, OK, uh, how am I supposed to review changes to, I don't know, macro ecosystem? Or I don't really know what the Python met metadata, metadata are. So they are changing half of the ecosystem, or they are dealing with some C extensions or multiple architectures. Like, how am I even supposed? I don't understand how the changes. I barely can read the spec file. I can't really review it, right? And how can anyone? How can anyone expect me to? So, the solution is that's just another piece of tribal knowledge. The experienced package maintainers they do the reviews and they somehow know how know how to do it. So we as a team created a guide. Uh, we decided that uh, it's, it's beneficial for everyone to pull some of the tribal knowledge from uh, the uh, team members. And we did it from the point of view of a person who does know basics of Git, but maybe have never actually cooperated in an open source project. Uh, with the guide, which is an open document, anyone can read. Uh, I will not read it here. Uh, don't worry. Uh, there is a few sections which quite uh, in extensively cover uh, the basics and not so much basics. 
Uh, we cover, for example, the committing standard, how to deal with uh, white space noise. You know, when you open the spec file for the first time in your very smart IDE and save the spec file, it will just trim all the white spaces all around and people will not be grateful for that. Uh, it also covers uh, uh, how to write proper explanations, how to test your changes. If you're a pull request submitter, you can prepare your, your pull, pull request, your changes, in a matter that will be uh, well uh, welcomed by the other contributors to Fedora. Also, uh, if you are a re reviewer, uh, we included a long and short version, uh, what you could do or what you should do. Uh, the long version is intended to read and understand, and then you can use the short version, just the bullet points, uh, to copy paste to your Fedora uh, pull, pull request. Uh, so even as a newcomer, uh, even as a person who doesn't have like extensive knowledge of the packaging world, you can check a lot of stuff and you can mm, actually help the pull request submitter, even if they are very experienced, uh, to make the, their submission better. Uh, for example, you can uh, check the CI, you can check whether the commit is understandable, uh, whether the commit scope is sane, whether the right uh, Bugzilla ticket is linked, uh, whether the right discussion thread was linked, and so on. You can check, you can think about whether the change should go to older Fedoras or just the rawhide, or whether the change was tested enough. So there is uh, a lot of things that you can, you can basically lean uh, on the guidelines and use them as a guide, as a, as a uh, path towards even more complex contributions. So if you, uh, when you already, uh, if you're already, already familiar with the long version, then you have the short version, the checklist. It's 11 bullet points um, to use anytime. And if anything is unclear, you can always ask the submitter or ask another person to help you with the review. It's not like if you touched the uh, pull request, you have to stick with it till the end and this is only your sole responsibility. It doesn't work like that, fortunately for everyone. Uh, also, our guide contains uh, quite a lot of instruction, uh, the detailed instruction how to perform copper impact checks. Uh, as a team, we, grow to, we grew to use Copper as our testing environment uh, quite a lot. Uh, folks were talking about it just uh, in the uh, Python mass rebuild talk. I recommend to, to lurk uh, at their uh, talk here at NEST. Um, and we've uh, documented how we do it, how we want to do it. So uh, you can, if you have a package, if you maintain or co-maintain a package set that has the potential to break the Fedora ecosystem, it's really good to adapt it and to use it. Uh, the de detailed instructions how we do it in the Python world are there. So uh, after uh, a few months we had a discussion in our team like are even people using the guy so as you can expect the uh, answer is not even in our team no <laughs> one of the arguments was that 11 bullet points it's like overkill for trivial rebases when you just change the version and change log in the uh in the spec file well my answer to that would be i guess you have to wait it for yourself uh, I use it. I use the, the, the review checklist uh, every time because it helps me organize my thoughts. And even if uh, I evaluate it at uh, 7 out of 11 are not uh, non applicable, I actually spare the second to think what's the impact of the pull request uh, to the Fedora ecosystem. And of course, uh, in our team, there are some very experienced folks whose tribal knowledge was the one that we pulled to create the guidelines. So I can expect that uh, they don't need, need to be reminded to add the Baxilla reference to the changelog or so. Uh, yes, Miro, they are. And uh, yeah, from our discussion, we also realized that the Copra impact check template uh, is really used by the folks. They report they like it a lot and it became officially the way we want to test uh, and integrate our changes to Fedora. 
And me personally, I would be half of the packager I am if I wasn't lurking at other people's contribution. Uh, it was really hard for me to start with the reviewing, but with the guide, I felt empowered enough to uh, actually be there and you know invest time and energy, uh, which uh, helped me a lot in my journey. So it's time to head to the conclusion. Uh, so let me just underline some points I think uh, are the most important in this pull request workflow. Uh, there is one minus, right? You have to wait. Like when you open pull request and wait for someone to review, it can last a long time and it can, for some impatient uh, people, it can be quite hard. But on the other hand, uh, the package maintainers really benefit from pull requests from the green CI stamp that everything is okay uh, to get, getting access, direct access to other people's knowledge just right where they need it. The beginners can pull the knowledge out of the experienced people and maintainers or co-maintainers of their package, which is a great way to uh, onboard people uh, and like, give them opportunity to learn. Uh, Fedora is more stable and the chance to break it is reduced when you have another pair of eyes that looks at your changes. Uh, there is a big potential to reduce the docs and the process gaps, uh, not, not to reduce the docs, docs I'm sorry, to uh, make the docs uh, more complete and to reduce the process gaps uh, so that it becomes more approachable and complete for the newcomers. And also in the long run, from seeing more of the ecosystem than just your own contributions, when you read a lot of other people uh, are uh, improving in the Fedora ecosystem. In the long run, you get the potential for making the packaging world better. You are much better equipped uh, to propose better changes, uh, well-meant changes, like better convenience macros or better processes at all. So I think it's a win-win-win situation. Thank you very much for your attention. That was it. And I let me take a look at the chat. I was not following it. There are no questions. You can ask the questions now if you like. I'll just scroll a bit. Yes, all of this works if you have another, some other people uh, in your package. Probably a good tip would be also to uh, watch the packages you like and just watch the activity there so you can get notified uh, through the email when something happens on them. So, so Miro said that uh, the good tip is to add six to your packages uh, to get a bigger chance for a review. Of course, you can always uh, you can always ask for the help uh, using Fedora channels, like a Fedora Devil mailing list or uh, on IRC. Hmm. How to be better to fix big dependency issues? Wow, that's a philosophical one. <laughs> uh, can you be more specific in that? <laughs> yeah, Mira's right. It's always easier to prevent them than to fix them. Uh, we use copper a lot. We build uh, all the dependent packages. Uh, we check the build logs. We ensure that we don't uh, break the other packages intentionally. Uh, unfortunately, if the packages don't uh, contain tests, for example, tests, it sometimes it's the, the effort is moot. But uh, even in the new packaging, Python packaging guidelines, uh, it said that the check must not be uh, totally uh, raised from the spec file. So hopefully it's getting better. OK, OK, thank you very much well, one more time for your attention. I will now stop sharing the screen, which probably uh, will cause my browser to fail. <laughs>